Morning. I want you to take a look at my 10 day forecast. You'll understand why this is so important in this video because there is a shift in the force coming up in the yard care. <laughs> Your lawn care is going to change because of the temperature situation. We're right at that point where all of a sudden things will start to change dramatically. You're going to go from 90s all the way down to 80s and even 70s. And that's what we see coming up. And it's important to understand how we shift, whether it's a warm season or cool season grass. Here we go. Let's do this video. This is Anna. Say hey, Anna. Hey, Anna. <laughs> These are probably the best. Those little ones right there. Those look like These are sewing ones. Are these for sewing? Yeah. They're for doing this, actually. They're sharp, be careful. Let's see if the sequence works. Safety button. Pull. Ready? Spectacles, testicles, wallet, watch. The only thing <laughs> that I was noticing when you were mowing the lawn is you could have put a little more pep in your step. <laughs> and she's grading me. I mean, really? I'm old, dude. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a fitness instructor like some people. <laughs> hey guys, Doc. What are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about a pretty important crossover point that's approaching quickly, and that is the crossover where we start to make the transition from this summer brutal heat and drought situations into the fall temperatures. It's really important both for warm season and for cool season that you think about, oh, two or three, actually two to four different things that you might want to think about. I'll cover that real quick. Uh, Anna's coming over. I'll introduce you guys to Anna. We're going to put out fertilizer on the back and then we're going to put out some green shocker on that front area. Then we're going to go up. I'll show you. We actually replanted the whole orchard. I'll take you up there and show you that. And uh, that's about it. So let's roll. Okay, first of all, who is Anna, Doc? We call her Tacky Farm Lady. <laughs> She's just... Uh, I met her a while back and she's really smart. She's married, she has three kids. She actually does precision long range shooting. She's a fitness instructor, but she's really funny and she's really smart. She actually is really good at content. So I don't do Instagram, but she actually is really good at that kind of stuff. So she's gonna be helping us out with some of our content and she's gonna be posting some stuff up to Instagram. So go make sure if you have an Instagram account, go over. I'll put a link in the description below down to our Instagram, follow it down there, because uh, she does some really funny stuff. But she's also gonna come out and help a couple days a week. So you guys may know that Ryan, my son, has been helping me out for almost a year and a half here. And I really couldn't have done this project without him. It's just been, he was just fantastic and it really, really helped. He's gone off now, graduated into the big boy world. He's got himself a job. So I'm sort of picking people to do certain things. John and Jeff are my main guys for all that heavy stuff, for cutting and for all the landscaping work and tree work. So they come over probably about two days a week. The Good Witch comes out and works in the gardens, but she's been kind of limited with her job and everything else. So I wanted one more person to fill in to help out a little bit, especially around here with the gardens and stuff. But at the same time, I knew how creative that Anna was. So be looking for her stuff. She's really funny. So let's talk about the fall. What are the things you're gonna be looking for? First, I wanna address the warm season, and it's actually pretty simple. Then we'll get into the cool season stuff. On warm season, our treatments and fertilizers actually coincide with the downward trend. So as our temperatures actually start to actually drop down, so does everything else that we do. I don't want you to get into, and this applies for you cool season guys as well, I don't want you necessarily to buy into winterizers. There really is no need for a winterizer. All I want you to think about on warm season is once we start to get into the 70s on a consistent basis, your lawn is just gonna basically slow way down. So right now, while it's still warm, PGF complete, PGF complete, until we get into the point where we're struggling to get into the 80s and we're in the 70s. At that point, what you can do is if you want to, you can put down a light coat of PGF balance. Now PGF balance, you want to put down something that's low in nitrogen. It's a 10-10-10, all fast release. It'll put a little bit of nutrients in the ground if your soil is deficient. If you don't have a soil test done and you're not sure, then put in, down a little bit of 10-10-10 as you go into the fall. That's it, you're done. I don't want you doing really anything else. We don't even consider really pre-emergence until it starts to get cold. And really what we're fighting off are winter weeds and poana. So we're not even going to think about pre-emergent until it actually gets cold. Next, let's talk about the cool season, guys. If you're going to do any reseeding or overseeding, now is going to be that time. 
cut your lawn a little bit short, do some core aeration, put out some overseed. Again, PGF complete. You guys are actually opposite. So as your cool, as your temperatures drop, your activity and application levels this time of year actually start to go up. So you're actually gonna be putting down more fertilizer going into the cooler fall season. This is your time to shine. Now, both of you, both warm season and cool season, you do wanna consider if you have any grub damage, and a lot of people don't know they do, this is a time, this is your last chance to get the grub treatment down. I'll put a link to it down below. It's the granular double kill duocide that we recommend. It's on that page below along with everything else. PGF complete, the balance, everything is linked down below that I'm talking about as much as possible. She got a little what? Wonky. She got wonky? No, your wonky. wonkiness is fine. It's gonna curve anyways, because the whole property sort of curved. The only thing that I was noticing when you were mowing the lawn is you could have put a little more pep in your step. <laughs> now she's grading me. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> so anyways, right now what's being cut is actually the Bermuda. And then the creeping bent that's in here, which you can't really see, is not being cut. But we'll see how this comes out. So, uh, techie farm lady showed up. This is Anna. Say, hey, Anna. Hey, Anna. <laughs> she's gonna, she's learning just like a lot of you guys are, but we're gonna go out here. This is the fall and I'm doing a fall video. So understanding what points we need to look at as far as grubs, army worms, fertilizer, what we shouldn't do, what we should do cool season versus warm season so there's a bunch of technical crap that i'm going over but today she's going to help me we're going to put green shocker on the front we're going to put pgf complete down here and then i think she's going to swing up to the gardens and work on some of that fungus and blight stuff up in there so we got a busy day ahead of us we got to roll all right so i'm going to do the front and anna's going to do the back but on the front i'm using green shocker and why am i using green shocker if you don't know about green shocker it is a super super fine fertilizer that's the size of salt and it's all fast release so it's a dg particle i don't want to use slow release fertilizers here because it'll drain down to the pond and i don't want any of that leaching going into the pond so that's why we only use green shocker out here um, on the back it doesn't matter it's not going anywhere but here's a tip if you're going to use green shocker number one it's a pain in the butt because it's hard to see it's so fine and it's black you know, you can't see your particles going out. So I always like to come out when there's a dew on the grass and I can use my dew as my line guide. And I know I'm throwing three to four feet. So when you use a spreader, I'm talking to Anna here right now. When you, <laughs> she's running around the background. When you use a spreader, your spreader is going to throw about three feet, four feet with this stuff. Okay. So that means when you come back, what's also going to happen? There's going to be another three or four foot pattern that's thrown the other way. So that's why. So my I, rows are going to be wider. Right. So what I do is when I get to the end, I actually I stop and then I go like this. And this is the easiest way to do it is three feet, three feet, turn. Okay. And that way you know that that's what you're putting out pattern. Next, what does the do do? Do do. What does the do do? <laughs> It, it, when you're using a DG particle, it's really cool. Maybe I can get capture an image of it, but a DG particle will actually latch onto, because of cohesion or whatever you want to call it, will actually latch onto the particle of grass and sit there inside of a water droplet and will actually start to break down. Really? So it's sort of, yeah. So it's, <laughs> really? <laughs> so, it's, so it's actually kind of cool. So it starts the breakdown process. And then what you can do is wait about 10 minutes and then you can run your irrigation system so the DG particle has turned into a liquid and now you push it in, it goes in. Where I'm gonna wet my finger. That's, that's the best way to show you. See that? The particles are the size of salt. I mean, it looks like black salt. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it looks like. And this will start to turn into a liquid almost right away. All right, so we're on the backyard and we have established and new and I'm putting down a light coat of PGF complete. PGF stands for, what does PGF stand for? 
Pretty good food. <laughs> pretty good food. Pretty good. <laughs> Professional grade fertilizer. 16. Now this has humic, has three types of nitrogen. This a lot is of fertilizers have big chunky rocks in them. Okay, so if I have a blade of grass here and a big chunky rock is over here, it's kind of hard for this piece of grass to get that nutrient. Right. When you reduce the size down of a particle, you get more of it. So I take that particle and I break it into 10 pieces and I get more particles per square inch and it, I get greater coverage. That's whenever you see a professional grade fertilizer, golf course, sports turf, green chalker is the same. They're always gonna have small particles. So you can put out a light coat and you can only put out a light coat if you have that small particle size. grass all right so I have my son to thank for this <laughs> he was over at tractor supply and he texted me he said dude they've got these all kinds of fruit trees over at tractor Supply." so I went online I looked them up and I saw they were 38 bucks each and I was like what these are like seven eight foot fruit trees and I'm like no way so I went over there and basically bought almost all they had why am I doing that? Because the orchard, when I first planted it, got attacked. I left for a month and it got attacked by Japanese beetles. And we got it to heal back up a little bit. Then the deer are in there. And the deer are in there just killing everything. So I figured out a little system, kind of redneck ingenuity, where I'm going to put these deer cages around them and we're going to replant that orchard. I hate to dig up all these trees, but for what I paid for these, I don't mind doing it because these are nice and at least... Maybe next year I might even see some fruit. As big as these are, I may even see some fruit in next year. We'll see. I gave her the old one. <laughs> her chariot. <laughs> There's no brakes. I'm sorry. She left the brake on. It won't move. It won't move. Say hey, Anna. Hey, Anna. <laughs> She's such a pain in the butt. <laughs> so we're out here doing the orchard. Grab one of those cages real yeah. quick. And these cages now are really just not only to keep the deer from browsing, but also to keep uh, the bucks from rubbing because that's what they're doing out here. So let's open one up. All right, here, now you grab one side. Here, I'll grab this side. You go around that side. One-handed, I'm doing this, sorry. Then these come around just like this. And then she's gonna go ahead and she's going to secure it and this will keep just like this one here now the deer can't come in here and they can't actually come in here and actually nibble they can only get so much in here and the bucks can't come in here and rub on these which is what's happening <laughs> lovely job lady so here's a perfect example these are deer this is a buck rubbing on this and the deer have been eating this. You can see where the, all the limbs are nipped off. In the back of my, in the back of my UTV, I have those little U wires. Yep. And so all I'm doing with these is I'm putting two per cage just so they can't push it. So I make sure that my cage is fairly centered, about like that. Either then, side. Well, I come in at a bit of an angle like this, <laughs> just like that. And yeah, you one in here and one over down? there. No, it's good. And then just one over there. And that's it. Do you that's want me to basically. Do it on this one? Just yeah, we got to do them all. So you know, so go ahead and. And then I got to get my spray because there's a fire ant pile down over here, which we do not want to get involved with. And that's pretty much it. So now we're safe. So last time I didn't do this right. This time I am doing it right. This is the way that we need to do it. The only thing I have to do is I'm going to have to come in here. If I have any more beetles, I'll have to come in here and spray it. And that's it, because the beetles just hammered this place. They ate it all down to nothing. Oof. So some key points to wrap up for this fall is understand your time, your time for transition and watch your 10-day forecast. You're going to see it start to pop up. And when your lawn starts to sort of, if you're warm season, when that lawn starts to go to sleep, let it go to sleep. You don't have to do anything to it. Maybe a little PGF balance, and that's pretty much it. Do treat for grubs. If you have any grub damage, you need to treat for it. Now, I am going to be doing, over here, I'm going to be doing a winter overseeding with annual ryegrass because I want to prevent, this is that new Bermuda, look at it. Looks fantastic. 
So I'm going to be doing an overseeding with annual rye. So hit subscribe. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you're um, following our Instagram page because Anna's going to be doing some fun stuff over there. Let me just walk over real quick. This looks great, by the way. Next year, this is going to be amazing. This is only, what, two months old? All this Bermuda inside of a nasty, rocky Rudy. Let me show you this area over here real quick, if you're still with us. This was that land clearing project, and I told you guys I'd give you an update and show you. Even though we're really, really dry, we're in the middle of a tail end of a drought, today is the first day I'm supposed to have a thunderstorm this afternoon. <laughs> I never look more forward to a storm, but I want you to see the germination over here. On the back, we have all kinds of germination. We'll see how that survives. Remember, we have that standing water issue, and that back gets saturated. I want to see how that seed does, but over here, even though it's been dead dry over here, look at that. I've got some decent germination. I got three types of grass seeds. I've got clover, I've got turnips. And then we're gonna put over here, over here we're gonna be putting um, that little cabin, studio, whatever over there. And what I'll probably do is I'm gonna have uh, Austin come over and help me finish off the inside of that. I think Anna will come over and help. So it'll be kind of cool. This winter we'll have some really neat projects to do. And we may even start to do some like little podcast over there, you know. There's nothing else on TV, so let's do something entertaining. But look at this over here. So you can start to see all the grasses, the little clovers. That's gonna be really cool to watch. And now I do have micro clover in here too, but man, we need some rain, this is dead dry. So remember guys, prepare for the fall season. It's coming up, things are gonna change. And uh, that's about it. Talk to you later. Dot.